Hello everyone. In today's command tutorial, we're going to look at how to coordinate anti-ship missile strikes with vehicles that have different speeds, distances, ranges. So in this particular scenario, set up a pretty standard Cold War deal. It's uh, 1977. We're dealing with the Cold War database, though, not the modern database. Uh, Aegis destroyers and cruisers make things much, 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 much more difficult to try to pull this kind of an operation off. That being said, I have a feeling we're going to be pretty successful here. So as usual, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're dealing with here. We know that there is an un known enemy surface action group here. We're going to hit it with everything. So what do we have at our disposal? First of all, we have Tupolev 95 and RT. He's basically keeping an eye on these guys with this long range radar. We have a uh, Whiskey, the second, I'm sorry, this is a Charlie 1, has a very limited range anti-ship missile. We have a Charlie 2, which is a slightly better range anti-ship missile. We have these Echo 1s, which had this awesome anti-ship missile. This is the P6. This thing's actually very capable, a little slow. Of course, we have a rocket cruiser. We have the Kinda. We don't have the Kirov yet, which is kind of disappointing, but this also possesses a very, very deadly weapon, the P-35, which is almost like an upgraded version of this particular missile. And of course, we have the standard anti-ship platforms. We have everybody's favorite. We have the Tupolev-22, the M model. We have half a regiment. And of course, we have the Tupolev-16s, which are carrying both KSR-2Ms as well as KSR-5M anti-ship missiles. Now, you're sitting there going, well, that's a lot of different kinds of missiles. Uh, we just order everybody to attack at once, right? Right? That doesn't work. If you try to launch piecemeal one missile at a time, you're never ever going to be able to get through the anti-missile protection that a typical U.S. Navy group has. We've got to make it so the missiles arrive in a very short order with each other. Now, this is one of those things that's easier said than done, especially in the real world. But the good news is we can use a little bit of math to take our lives a little bit simpler. So what I have right here is an Excel spreadsheet. This spreadsheet basically shows me all the different weapons I have at my disposal in the scenario as far as weapons. Obviously, the KH-22, if I had enough of these, I wouldn't need to do anything else because I could just use these to basically rain damage down on the enemy ships. Um, of course, I have the KSR-2M, like I was saying, the 5, the P-35, with the P-70, the 120, and of course, the 6. So... How do we coordinate this? You can see each one of these is a drastically different range. Obviously, the air-launched ones tend to have much longer range than the especially submarine-launched ones, which got awful range. And they also have totally different cruise speeds. You can see I've only got three supersonic weapons here, which means that how are you going to launch these and then launch the other ones so that everybody gets there at the same time? There's a couple different ways to do this. The first thing I would recommend to do if uh, you're interested in getting a little too fancy is if you go onto Google real quick and you type in Commando Strike Planner, Keep in mind, you can open this up in Google Sheets. There's this Excel strike planner that does a spectacular job of calculating these kind of items, just like I have here. It actually does a better job than I'm going to do, but for my plat purposes, I'm going to make things simpler. So anyway, how do we how do we coordinate these guys? I mean, we can launch them all at once, but that's not going to work. So we're going to use the game to help us out, and we're also going to use a little bit of math. So for one thing I notice is if um, I use a 300 seconds as five minutes as my standard, how far can each one of these missiles go in five minutes? Well, we see this one can go this far, this far, but ah, we're in trouble. Check it out. The P-70 can't travel 50 nautical miles because it would have run out of fuel already. This is obviously not going to work as a method. So that means we're actually going to have to launch these missiles at a different time. So the first thing I like to do is I like to go ahead and realize that not every missile should be fired at its maximum range. Ideally, you want to shoot at about half maximum range so it has some fuel to start a nicer fire when it gets to the target. We're not going to do that because it's going to put, especially a submarine, at an extreme risk to this carrier group. So what I did is I took all the times that we can travel at, multiplied them by 0.9. So this would be my new time that I can fire, which also means my modified range because obviously time and range are going to be the same because they travel at a constant speed, thankfully, which means that I can engage my targets at these ranges safely and still have um, just a little bit of fuel left over in case we need to turn at the last minute. This is getting a little easier now. So um, let's go to the next level. 
in order to travel this range, we would need this amount of time. In this case, look at this one, 17 minutes. That would mean that we'd need to launch the missiles so that they all have this amount of time and they all arrive at the same time at the target. This is actually pretty easy to do because all we have to do is take what time we want the target to be struck, subtract the amount of time it's going to take to get there, and that gives us a launch time of when we have to launch the missiles. Keep in mind, professional would be within 30 seconds of each other. We'll be lucky if we can get it within two minutes, even within this particular program, only on account of the fact in the real world, what you do is say, all right, everybody, turn around in exactly two minutes, everybody fire at the same time. In command, it's going to be a little bit more spread out. But at the same time is, I don't think this carrier group is going to survive. So what do we do first now that we go over to command? Well, it's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is set up a waypoint at the distance that we want to launch at for each respective weapon. So, for example, let's go ahead and start at the bottom here. 225 nautical miles for the P6 for the Echo 1 and 2. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this group, and I'm going to go ahead and create a waypoint 225 nautical miles away. I'm actually going to park it right here. And this is going to be for my Echo 1 and 2. So I'm going to call this Echo 1 and 2. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that waypoint to be referencing the carrier group. So I'm going to set it to a fixed bearing, not a rotating bearing, right here. So now all I have to do is assign my two echoes to go to this point. I'm just confirming that real quick. Looks good. So grab my mission creator. I'm going to create, uh, we'll call it echo one, two, just to make my life a little bit simpler. I'm going to set this to support. Press OK. Then I'm going to grab my echo one and two add them to this mission. Now, one thing I'm going to change, though, is I'm going to tell them to go full speed. These guys are nuclear. I don't care if they make noise. They're too far away from the enemy group to be spotted anyway. So they're going to choo-choo as fast as they can to get into their firing position. So all we have to do now is go ahead and do this for the other uh, craft. So the Echo 1 and 2 is all set. Go ahead and I'll let's take a look. Now this is going to be the P120. This is going to be the Charlie 2. Where's my Charlie 2? He needs to be at a range of 72 nautical miles. Let's go find 72 nautical miles. That's actually pretty close. We'll set it right about, and yeah, we want to aim down a little bit to make it a little bit more interesting. There we go. We're going to set this. This is going to be my Charlie 2. I believe that's my Charlie 2. Yep. I'm going to set this waypoint fixed to the enemy group. Keep in mind, if we lose sight of the group, we, our waypoint's going to get a little confused. Now I'm going to grab my Charlie 2, who happens to be sitting right here. We should be always specific with our missions. Set this to support. Press OK. Keep in mind with support, watch your WRA and MCON. You don't want these guys broadcasting with radar or something stupid like that when they get there. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to order him to go full speed to get in position. I'm going to order him to cruise once he gets there. That's all looking pretty good. Close that. All right, we're moving on our way. So now, oh, I feel so bad for this guy. He's probably going to get sunk. So he needs to be 36 nautical miles away from the main group. Oh, I'm sorry, man. This sucks. Okay, we'll do the best we can, though. Uh, we'll set this one. 36 nautical miles. Oh, what a bummer. So this is our poor Charlie one here. You know, some of the early ships, uh, submarines that launched anti-ship missiles actually required to um, basically surface in order to fire. You know, we really take it for granted how easy this technology is now. So I'm going to go ahead and create a mission for him. This is Charlie 1. Charlie 1. Set this to support again. Press OK again. This is just a mission to get them in position. That's all set. We're going to order him to get over there as fast as he can. We're going to, of course, order him to cruise once he gets in position. That's an enormous distance, so I'm not too concerned with him. Now it's time to deal with, I believe, the Kinda comes next. Yes, the Kinda. The Kinda has to be 198 nautical miles away. That's pretty easy. 198 would be about right here. Are we going to be able to get there in time, though? We're going to try. We're going to try. So this particular point right here, this is going to be for the Kinda. This, again, is a rocket cruiser. It's a very, very, very capable rocket cruiser. It just it, it shoots a lot. They don't go very fast. So we'll set this to support. 
Press OK. In the real world, by the way, you want to have ships over here, you want to have subs down here, you want to have airplanes over here. You want to make it as difficult as possible for the enemy to intercept you. So let's set it to ship. We want him to get there as fast as he can. And obviously, we want him to cruise once he gets into position. That's all set. That's all set. That's all set. Make sure it's set to the correct bearing type. Excellent. So we're done with the Kinda. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the KSR-5, 162 nautical miles. So now I'd love to shoot them from up here, but the reality is if I shoot them from up here, they're going to take forever to get into position and they might run out of fuel. So that could be problematic. So what do we need? 162? 162. If I select this one, we'll put him in the middle of here. Again, this is a scenario just for testing here. 162 would be right here. Perfect. So this is for the KSR. This is for the KSR-5. TU-16. Okie doke. So I'm going to go ahead again. Remember to set these guys relative. Unless, of course, they're parked or something stupid like that. If they're parked, then it, you know that's not so bad, if you ask me. So now we're going to go ahead and assign some tuple of 16s to get into position as well. TU-16 KSR-5. We're going to use the support mission. Again, support missions are great ways to get everybody in position. Let's go get myself the KSR-5s. Again, this is why it's always nice if you have notes. Go ahead and dump all those guys into this mission. Nope. Uh, airplane, da, da, da. let's see, for aircraft, we're going to want them to loiter when they get there. Single aircraft, that's a little awkward, but it's going to work actually pretty well for us. Okay, that one's all set. Let's go to the next one. Now we need the KSR-2. We need to be 108 nautical miles away. Oh, I don't like that very much. All right, we'll deal. We'll put these guys down here. And again, the Swedish would be pretty annoyed at us for doing this, but this is just a scenario. We're going to say KSR. What are those twos? Those are KSR-2. KSR-2M, TU-16. Again, we're just going to go ahead and set this. If you forget this step, by the way, when you're doing something this ridiculous, you're going to get very grumpy. Uh, let's do KSR. What is this? 2M. Again, set this to support mission. Press OK. Let's get the rest of our badgers. Don't need them on one-third mode. That would be nice and frustrating. Everybody else, yeah, that's set. That's all we needed to do there. And then last but not least, the KH-22s. These are awesome. These things have a stupidly long range, and they are extremely fast, which makes them very deadly. So our range here on these is going to be 194 nautical miles, 194. I'm actually going to put them here. I like to put them over here a lot of times if I have the time to do so. But for this particular scenario, I don't want to waste too much time and have them all run out of fuel before I can actually use them for something. Keep in mind, in the real world, we have to do something like that. But again, this is just a demonstration, and it will be a very effective demonstration, I promise you. All right, 194 nautical miles away, right there. We'll set these guys also to be a fixed bearing. Again, if I did a rotating bearing, they do one of these things when they rotate. And this is going to be for my KH-22s, my TU-22s. All right, let's go ahead and set this to support. Press OK. Grab my big old group of uh, tuple of 22s, my backfires. Shut that off. Shut that off. We don't need it. Da, 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 da. Of course, if we have in-flight refueling, we can keep them in the air a long time. That's it. So now we're ready to go ahead and relax for a minute as everybody gets into position. All right. Let's watch what happens here. So... I'm going to update my attack time when I have a better idea of when I actually have to strike. Like I said, 4.30 is probably a pretty good time, but I will modify that once I know that everybody's in position. Oh, I feel so sorry for this group. They're about to get hammered so hard. All right, looks like our airplanes are almost completely in position. Remember, these points move over time, which means our airplanes move over time also. Okay, that's one of the great things about command is you can get away with stuff like this. And you can see the uh, allies, obviously, have got plenty of aircraft keeping an eye on things. And pause. Nice, we did it. So now everybody is now in position. Actually, I take that back. For some reason, our two echoes are being lazy. <gasps> oh, oh, look at that. Now they're in position. <laughs> it was okay. It wouldn't have been too bad. It looks like our, our Charlie, of course, is desperately trying to get in position. And obviously, our other Charlie, hopefully, Hopefully he does not get nailed by one of these you know, S3s or whatever else. I can already see some enemies sent on Bowie sitting in the water. So that could be bad news for us. All right, we're ready for the fun part. Everybody's in position. So how do you do this? Well, 
let's see what time it is. First of all, it's 356. We want these missiles to get there as soon as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and see our time on target is 430. But we know we can probably start launching at 4 o'clock. So 4 o'clock, let's see, 1744 would be about, let's say, it's going to be about 10 after 4, I think, something like that. Which gives us a first launch time of 3.52. No good. Can we do 15 after 4? Does that do, what does that do for us? So that gets us our first launch time is going to be at 4.01. Let's do 14. And let's go ahead and we're good to go. Good. Which means at 4 o'clock, of oh, 3.56 and 16 seconds. My apologies. Nope, that's too early. I was right the first time. There we go. So that means at 3.57 and 16 seconds, we're going to have to order the rocket cruiser Kinda to start firing. Then afterwards, our next launcher is going to be this one, which is going to be our Echoes. Then it is going to be this group, this group, this group. And then last but not least, we're going to be firing the P-70s last. So at 3.57, we're going to go ahead and unpause. And Oh, sorry. 3.57 and 16 seconds. You've got to be precise. Here we go. Let the fireworks begin now. So I'm going to grab my Kinda. Notice, by the way, the Kinda's in range. All right, here we go. So how do we arrange? We have 16 of these very, 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 very big missiles, very slow missiles to use, and plenty of targets. I'm just going to be polite and assign one to each just to make the enemy's fire control have a tougher time. I apologize, this section of the video will take a minute because there's a quite a bit of missiles I have to allocate here. I have no idea what any of these missiles are going towards target-wise, but again, our intelligence suggests that they're all dangerous, so uh, hit them with what you got. Got it. Okay, so Skunk 4 and up is going to be my next one. Check. So I'm going to go ahead and unbold this one. Our next attack launch is going to be at 401, and it's going to be my Echo 1 and 2. So let's go find my Echo 1 and 2. Where's my Echo 1 and 2? I believe these guys are up here somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. There they are. There's my Echo 1 and 2. Okay, check the time one more time. 401 in three seconds. Pause. All right, your turn. So these guys, by the way, my weapons release authorization will not allow them to attack surface targets willy-nilly. So I think we left somewhere here. So I'm actually going to use two to each target. All right, you get two missiles. You get two missiles. Uh, you get four missiles. Why not? Again, without knowing exactly what I'm shooting at here, I don't mind too, too much. Check. All right, now they're going to launch their missiles. Unbold this one. Our next launch time is going to be four minutes and six seconds, and it's going to be the KSR-2. All right, who's got KSR-2s? That's P-6s. You guys. Oh, those are KSR-5s. These guys must be carrying KSR-2s. Good. So this is going to be the next group to fire, and they're going to fire at 406. Here we go. There's going to be some fireworks in a second, by the way. What do we say? 406 and 22 seconds. we got to be precise. 406 and 22. Okay, check it out. These missiles are actually about to overtake these missiles, but we're just getting started. So now we're going to check one more time. KSR-2M, KSR-2M. Good. Manual attack. Okay, I have 18 of these, and I basically have that many, so it's going to be three. It's, well, it's two missiles each. All right. You guys launch. You guys launch. You guys launch. Whoa. Whatever. Sorry about that. Let's make sure I'm launching all my weapons here. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead there, there. Again, I apologize already. Let's kind of take a second to kind of zip through. But when you do this in the real world, you have to actually coordinate regular troops for this. This could take a very, very serious amount of coordination on your part to do so. I'm going to be assigning two groups there each. Let's go ahead and group to this one. Of course, we don't want to miss anything. Let's go to the next guy. Let's go ahead and give him two more missiles. Go ahead and grab this one, grab this one. Give me two of those. Give me two of those. Again, it helps if you know what you're shooting at, so you know what you're wasting your missiles on. Obviously, if it was an Aegis destroyer or something like that, I'd probably want to put most of these missiles into the side of that target first. Let's go ahead and just uh, allocate the rest like that. Check. Nice. So 406 and 22. Our next launch is going to be 408 and 27, and it's going to be the Charlie 2. Let's go find the Charlie 2. There he is. 408 and whoa, 408 and 27 seconds. Go.
Got it. 408, 27 seconds. Now the Charlie fires. Notice these missiles are arriving as the Charlie is firing. Whoop. He's in position. I told you he was in position. Good job, Charlie. All right, I've got eight missiles. We'll do uh, groups of two here. And you're going to ask yourself later on, what was the most effective weapon of this group? All right, so that is all set. Our next launch is going to be 409 and 57 seconds, and that is going to be our backfires. Oh, backfires, I said. There's our backfires. Check the time one more time, 409.57. These are the fun missiles, by the way. Pause. All right, backfires. Do the deed. Wow. Okay. Grab the next skunk. Now, keep in mind, some of these missiles are going to take a non-straight path towards the target. And as a result, it's going to throw off all this wonderful work that I'm doing here to try to time this attack as precisely as possible. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but what are you supposed to do, right? All right, all those guys, go ahead and group, grab this one, grab this one, grab this one, go to the next one, grab this one. Again, without knowing what I'm shooting at, I'm just kind of spreading the wealth, so to speak. It looks like I have four targets and four badgers left, or backfires, I should say. The backfire bomber. All right. Nice. Excellent. Well done. Well done. Well done. All right. Our next attack is at four minutes, ten, uh, four o'clock, ten seconds, ten minutes, five seconds. There we go. Pause. Oop. Pause. Check. So this is going to be our tuple of 16. These are the KSR 2. Uh-oh. I didn't mess that. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. This is the KSR 5s. My bad. I believe these are the KSR 5s. Indeed. All right. Let's do it again. Hey, we've been able to identify people now. Of course, now I'm just wasting missiles on things I don't need to waste missiles on, but eh, this is just a demonstration. What are you supposed to do anyway? Obviously, in modern times, this is slightly trickier to pull off. And by the way, um, good luck with the Aegis cruisers, because if they have a pair of those, you're never going to get a missile in. Obviously, if we did something like this, that's not going to be very much fun for anybody. So we're going to grab the Badgers, going to grab the Farragut. Oh, this poor guy is about to get hit so hard, he's not going to know what to do with himself. That being said, don't underestimate enemy air defense. Americans are pretty good at that. Grab, right, grab this. Grab the Badger D. Now imagine in the real world having to work this out on a piece of paper. <laughs> Let's go ahead and set this up. Go ahead and grab skunk number nine. I have no idea what that is, but we'll find out in the, just a moment. Close. Uh, that takes care of our KSR-5s. And last but not least is our Charlie 1 with the P-70s. Where's that? Where's Charlie 1? Did Charlie 1 get sunk? No, but there's about a 1,000 people about to sink him anyway. So he's going to get sunk, like I promised. And he's going to be sunk. A uh, 411 is when we need to launch his what? 411 and 24 seconds. 411 and 24 seconds. Should you hear the sound effects? 411 and. Pause. Oh, I was a second late. Alright, lock onto those guys. Now I have a couple weapons left. And you get a missile. 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 Oh, apparently I just fired away Comrade. Right oh, well. And that's it. So all of our missile carriers, I'm going to check one more time, have launched, and theoretically, all of these missiles, despite the fact they're coming from 20 different sources, you know, five different sources, should arrive at the same time. Let's see how things look like from the American's perspective. <laughs> look at that. Notice some of these missiles, look at how fast they're overtaking these missiles. Now, these were the cruise missiles. These were actually missiles that we launched earlier. And these were the ones that came from the rocket cruiser, the Kinda. So look at how long it took them to get over here, even though everybody else is arriving at about the same time. Now, as you probably recall, our time on target was supposed to be 4.15. That's three minutes from now. Here we go. Oh, man. Look at how well-timed these missiles were. Actually, we did a really nice job this time. You can see the F-4 Phantom desperately trying to shoot down as much as it can. Here they come! Oh no!
And here we go. Of course, if I were a nice developer, a nice YouTuber type, I'd probably put the 3D view on so you could really watch what this looks like from the perspective of the poor Americans at the moment. Zoom out a little bit so you can appreciate how many missiles are arriving at the same time. 30 seconds is considered pretty much the standard as far as you did a good job. Let's go ahead and uh, grab the sinking US C Van Enterprise here. <laughs> and you can just see what it looks like. Oh, that's terrifying. So, yes. Oh, man, listen to those sounds. And that is the end of that carry battle group. I believe he's doing okay. The Sacramento still lives. And apparently this guy does too. What is this? The Mahan. Speed up time just a little bit here. Close that. Oh, trashed. I bet he's feeling pretty lucky right now. His 5-inch guns are going to start firing in about half a second. Oh, no, no. He's got some sea sparrows. It's not going to protect them. There's just so much saturation. And that's it. Wow. Okay. Let's go ahead and pause for a second here. Uh, we might as well let the rest of those missiles just go choo-choo and go zipping by. There's nothing left to sink, guys. <laughs> we did a pretty good job. They were within a couple minutes of each other. So that's the basic gist of how you're going to coordinate an attack like that. I know some of you are immediately going to say, can I get a copy of this? Honestly, go earlier in the video and go take a look at that really, really neat setup that that other guy did. He did a better job. So we basically launched about, I don't even want to know, it's going to be about 130 anti-ship missiles. What do they lose? Everything. What do they expend? Check this out. There's always one number that's huge. Yeah, there it is right there. And that is the end of the American fleet. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that scenario, scenario, I should say, tutorial. It's a neat strategy, but keep in mind in the real world, no player would be stupid enough to just sort of hang around and let people just line up and fire. You're going to have to come up with creative ways to sort of time everything simultaneously to be able to affect and attack that coordinated. Enjoy.